To The Point with your host, News Channel 5's Kelly Dunn. The Republicans control both houses of the state legislature. They've won the governor's office and all the cabinet posts. Now, President Obama is falling in the polls in Florida. Is this a lonely time to be a liberal Democrat in Florida? Good morning and welcome. These are not the best of days for Democrats in Florida. In the last election, they lost all statewide races. Next year at this time, we'll be in the height of campaign season. Will it be any different, and what will it take for the Democrats to become competitive? Our guest is one of the few liberal Democrats holding office right now, State Representative Mark Pafford, who was first elected back in 2008. Thank you very much for joining us today. My pleasure. Let's get to the point, Representative. Why are Democrats having such a, a tough time winning elections in this state? Well, in this state, I think it's uh, a number of issues, but obviously it goes back 10 years uh, from, from this point when we uh, had redistricting last. And uh, there was a, uh, districts were drawn to uh, basically enable the Republicans uh, to maintain power, and they've done a very, very good job of that. Well, and redistricting is happening again. That's correct. What are your anticipations? as we head into more redistricting in the state. Yeah, I, I think ultimately the, uh, the Supreme Court will determine the boundaries uh, of the districts that are going to be drawn. Uh, but, you know, I mean, there will be your normal politicking that occurs. The Democrats were just as guilty for something like 140 years in this state. Mm -hmm. uh, so amendments five and six that passed in 2010, I think will be very helpful. Is that going to have a direct impact on your district? Oh, yeah, all of mm -hmm. them. It's kind of like a domino effect. So what does that mean for you? And your well, political future. Uh, look, you know, um, draw the district and uh, that's run. Mm -hmm. uh, it's Palm Beach County. I'm a Democrat. Palm Beach County is a, a good county to be in if you are a Democrat. Other mm -hmm. places throughout the state may not be as good. The only other statewide elected Democrat is uh, Senator Bill Nelson. Are you concerned at all that, that this could one day become a one-party state? I don't think so. I think the atmosphere um, right now in the state of Florida, uh, it, it really is a, a Tea Party party. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the Republican primary is generally uh, in charge of most of the policy that we develop as a state. I think once, once the, uh, the primary ends, then you're going to have uh, more clear races. You're going to know exactly what the, who the Republican is, how far to the right that they went, uh, and certainly in, in terms of uh, the Democrats, you're going to know who they are, and hopefully it'll be a very clear difference. Well, and, and that is true. The Republicans are definitely growing uh, with the addition of the Tea Party. So what about the Democrats? How can they have that kind of growth? Well, I, I think it's going to come to common sense. Uh, the voters are going to pick up uh, all the nuances. I mean, in this state, when you look at the, uh, the, the Tea Party uh, agenda and, and the movement, if you will, it's, it's extremely conservative. You know, you've got a governor who, uh, when I questioned his staff in a committee meeting, basically said if you're a medically needy service, um, they would prefer you find a charity to take care of that. And I'm talking a kidney transplant. I, I think uh, once those clear definitions um, are, are understood in a general uh, type of election, uh, the voters are going to, I think, have a lot of common sense and vote for the person that best represents Elaborate them. Elaborate more on that, though, and finding sure. a, a charity for that sort of Yeah, um, it, it was a pretty simple question I asked mm -hmm. because they said charitable or, or contribution. Uh, from a nonprofit agency when I asked about uh, medically needy types of services. This is for very, very poor people who don't necessarily meet a Medicaid type of definition. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm talking kidney transplants, something extremely important that may kill somebody. Uh, and the governor's representative in 2010 said, and it's on tape, uh, no, we prefer that they look at charitable type of services, which to me is just shocking. Let's talk nationally. You supported Barack Obama running for president in 2008. Take a look at this. In the latest Quinnipiac University poll, Florida voters were asked if President Obama deserves to be reelected. And more than half, 53%, said he does not deserve to be reelected. What do you think the president can do to try to turn things around? Well, you know, look, we're over a year away. Um, I think historically, uh, the last five presidential elections, 32 million Floridians have, have turned out to vote. In each of those elections uh, between the major parties, there's only been about a 50,000 uh, vote difference. So there's a lot of time. Um, and again, you know, going back to the point I made just mm -hmm. a minute ago, once a clear Republican uh, rises above the rest mm -hmm. of the field, you're going to have a very, very, you know, big easy decision to make, in my opinion. Yeah, it'll be more, more black and white right now. You've mm -hmm. got 
uh, there are a lot of people that are obviously still in the hunt. Absolutely. Uh, you were one of the organizers for Awake the State, and that was the protest against uh, the Governor Scott's budget. Were they effective, and do you plan to do any of these again? Absolutely. I, you know, there's very, uh, the, here's the game. And if you know people watch and don't know this, mm -hmm. they should. The game is we go take votes. In this case, 420 miles away, uh, we raise as much money that we can uh, to tell you, the person that opens up in the mail, how great a person you are. Uh, accountability is so important in, in the democratic process, and and I certainly invite that by being part of Awake the State and uh, by being so open about vote histories, uh, legislation. Um, it, I think it's imperative if you do represent a district and you know over 150,000 people in a, in a district that you make yourself available. And if at the end of the day people don't agree with you, you lose. Um, hopefully you're doing a good enough job and you're connected to the people and you're not allowing the lobbyists cash to influence your decisions mm -hmm. and you're making public policy choices as opposed to political policy choices. You are connected to the people in your district and what are you hearing from them? What are the messages they want you to then be taking back to Tallahassee? Well, you know, I, I live uh, in just outside of Haverhill, mm -hmm. unincorporated Palm Beach County, uh, and my neighbors are always very happy to talk to me about the issues. I'm and, sure. And, you know, health insurance is huge, uh, just maintaining your house, putting food on the table. Um, and then, uh, you know, I have a daughter at UCF, and I have a son who's in high school. Uh, just those costs in terms of, of educating your, your youngster or your college student, uh, they're really um, upsetting uh, what we see as a middle class. And the, and the middle class is slipping away. And, and you know, I feel uh, it's my job to speak up for those people in the middle class. And what more can the state do for our middle class that it's not doing right now? I think the biggest thing the state can do is have a mature conversation. Uh, and I mean, put all the rhetoric aside. If you sign a contract that says you're not going to mention the tax word, you're not doing a service to anybody. We need to reform the tax system in the state of Florida uh, to represent a, um, a system that provides stability for business because right now we, we base our tax revenue on two general lines of revenue, uh, sales tax and property tax. As soon as the national economy uh, takes a dip, we crash. We're one of the few to get back up early. And so Florida really has to create a system that has varied revenue, revenue streams, it creates stability, but also that taxes people fairly. We don't have intangibles tax. We, Two billion dollars for the last 12 years has been lost. What hope is there that things will turn around to the point where it will make a difference, though, in every in everybody's daily lives? I think a lot of times there, you know, there's some some big ideas in Washington and Tallahassee, and I think a lot of times people feel like, well, I'm still getting squeezed. Mm -hmm. It's still not filtering down to me. I mean, so definitely, uh, you know, some kind of a, a fair tax system certainly would help. But what else? Well, I, I, in addition to the tax system uh -huh. and finding the dollars to take care of uh, the most vulnerable people in the state of Florida. 20,000 people are waiting on uh, services for disabilities, as an example. Mm -hmm. 50,000 on duplicated uh, for senior services. Um, I think we, we have to get the numbers in the House and the Senate closer. Um, if you're listening to this, you think, okay, he's a Democrat, he's not happy in the super minority. Mm -hmm. Well, let me tell you something. There's a lot of Republicans in the state legislature who I get along very, very well with. We've done a lot of great things over the last three years uh, that also don't have that voice. The more people that come together to actually debate issues, the better the policy end result's going to be. And I think to answer your question, uh, the average resident in Florida is going to benefit from. Exactly. Do you have high hopes for the state of Florida turning things around I mean the you know the jobs plan the pre, uh, the uh, governor has the 700,000 over seven years and that sort of thing I mean how how optimistic are you about our future and under this Republican governor especially well look Rick Scott represents the Tea Party well and, and you know what he is a very honest person when it comes to what he said he would do he is doing exactly what the Tea Party asked him to do uh, and and I think there's some good in that because it, it does allow people to understand the difference between a Rick Scott and a Mark Pafford. Mm -hmm. uh, I think, I, I actually am pretty optimistic. I, I think we can only go so far uh, before we find some balance in the chambers that provides some check and balance and, and some negotiation that occurs with the executive branch of the state of Florida, the governor's office, and both chambers. I'm, I'm fairly optimistic. Well, there's already talk of Charlie Crist possibly running for governor as a Democrat. Think that's a good move? 
Well, he can do what he wants. I mean, you're talking about a guy who spent 26 years as a Republican mm -hmm. and ran against Bob Graham in a U.S. Senate race. So, you know, I, I'm going to hopefully sit back and, and watch some folks uh, run that are Democrats. Uh, certainly, you know, he did very well in the last six months of his uh, uh, term as governor. So we'll see what happens. There's a lot of see what happens. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there is. <laughs> a lot. I'm smiling, so. It, it, that, that's a good thing. Well, thank you very much, State Representative Mark Baffert, for joining us today. We appreciate it, and I know you've been a, a viewer of To the Point, and we're glad you're out there. Thank every, you very every much. Every Sunday. Thank you. All right.